So this lecture is about body language and specifically how we can use uh, body languages and, and physical gestures in order to communicate characters' thoughts and feelings in animation. Uh, you should also watch the video on mime and pantomime which deals with similar concepts. In other words, how do you make a character act and think and feel without any words? And body language is tremendously important and many of the illustrations uh, in this lecture are taken from a, an excellent book called How to Read a Person Like a Book. And it's actually to be found not in the animation or art section of the bookshop, but in the self-help section. And the reason is it's, it's one of these books that's really about um, uh, reading other people and how, can you, how you can improve your own life by, by better observation of other people's body language. Um, that's not particularly what we need it for. For us, it's just useful because the illustrations are very clear and they show uh, how, how people's body language helps express what they're really thinking and feeling. Now, as always, um, I come back to Cliff Nordberg's excellent work from his, his training at Disney back in the 40s. Um, uh, and Nordberg was wonderful at creating these very, uh, very simple but clear character studies. Um, this, this angry guy here is a, is a, a wonderful um, study in controlled rage. He was really, really good at getting um, uh, thinking and feeling into his poses. So the trick is, how do we communicate what somebody is thinking without adding facial expressions? That's what this is really about. What does the body language tell us? What, is this, what, is, what do we know about this person standing here? Well, I think we know quite a lot about what he's thinking and feeling, even without being able to see his face. So let's take an example of a man talking in a phone booth. Now, who is this chap talking to? Um, we can see it's a, in the, the caption underneath is the salesman. And that's because he's just talking on the phone. There's no intimacy here. It's a, it's a business-like conversation. But compare that with this one here. This is the husband. Now, why is this the husband as opposed to the salesman? His pose is more relaxed. He's leaning against the wall. He's more at ease with himself. His weight has shifted onto one leg. He's less alert. But compare it with this one, the lover. And why is this the lover? Well, obviously, he's got something to hide. His pose is still relaxed, but he's turned away from us. He doesn't want to see. He doesn't want us to see his face. He doesn't want us to see who he's talking to. So, if we compare these three poses, there's nothing in the facial expressions here to tell us anything about them. But we know from the the body position that it's telling a different story, and that's why body language is so important. You've got to be aware of what the poses are that you're animating with, and what those poses communicate. Here's a, uh, two opposing camps. Uh, we know there's conflict here. Uh, this person leaning forward in an aggressive fashion. This defensive gesture here. This person is kind of preening over here. Uh, presumably these people are getting the better of the argument. So uh, also we know that uh, from the way people walk um, that we can tell a great deal about them. We know that this person is dejected and depressed. Uh, uh, we know that this person is preoccupied. Uh, and this person is kind of strutting um, in this chest out, head up pose. There are so many ways for a character to shake hands. Uh, one of the exercises that I've taught over at the animation workshop in Denmark is two characters, um, uh, 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 a, a, two, a, a two character interaction shot. And one of the examples we did was two characters shaking hands. And there are many, many ways that we can do this. Here's a, a, a double-handed handshake for both of these characters, but expressing something very different here. This is a very intimate gesture, whereas this, the politician's handshake, uh, is a much more uh, alpha male gesture. If, I, if, you, if you shake somebody's hand and you grab their hand in both of your hands, it's a dominant gesture, in a way quite uh, patronizing. So a simple thing like a handshake can make a really big difference depending on the kind of choices that we make. And with animation, obviously, unlike live action, you get nothing for free. So all the choices that you make in your poses are going to come from your own experience um, and your, your own creativity. This person, we know what's happened here. Uh, he's not having a good day. And we know this because his body is slumped and he's, 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 he's scratching the, the back of his head. 
tightly clenched fists can mean um, anticipation, thought, uh, frustration. Uh, but steepling is something that uh, is a quite different gesture, and that's actually a power and control gesture. And there are num you'll see a number of politicians use this. Angela Merkel, the German chancellor, uh, uh, does this. Uh, and there's a famous cartoon character who does it as well, and that is, of course, Mr. Burns, who's <laughs> constantly steepling before he unhatches some wicked plan. Um, hands can be very expressive in general. This, this, this person here is literally hot under the collar. A hand wringing gesture, obviously nervousness and anxiety. Uh, Piglet in the um, uh, Pooh Bear series is constantly wringing his hands. It's a standard Piglet gesture because he's worried and nervous. Here's a defensive beating gesture, somebody rubbing the back of their neck, nervous, anxious, uh, uh, worried. Hand rubbing can also be a gesture of expectation, looking forward to something uh, if it's done slightly differently. Here's, here's body language on an, on, a, on an audience, the audience that nobody wants. Why is it the audience that nobody wants? These people are obviously bored. Um, uh, <laughs> if I'm giving a lecture and I've got that audience, I know I need to wrap things up. So who's enjoying this here? Here you've got this very open position, expansive gesture, hands behind heads, very open cross-legged pose. This person slumped uh, listening to the endless tales of uh, whatever it is that this person with the spectacles is, is telling. Here's another one, a social gathering, uh, uh, frustration and self-control. Two angry males uh, uh, fighting for some kind of dominance. Maybe they're angry over a woman or something of that nature. Maybe it's business. What about this person here? <laughs> this person here is very bored. I hope you're not sitting like this while you're listening to this lecture. Um, the buyer and the seller. Which one is the buyer and the seller? Well, you know about the steepling gesture here. You know that that's power and control. Um, uh, this person's leg is wobbling, so presumably they're a bit bored. Uh, they're leaning back. Uh, this person here, leaning forward, probably trying to persuade, waving his, his hands. So this is the seller and this is the buyer. Uh, here, a wordless gesture. Uh, no need to explain this one. And here's an honesty gesture. Would I lie to you? Hands on the, hands on the chest. Here's a couple at a party. Uh, uh, these people are getting along just fine. In fact, uh, uh, they're getting along extremely well. She's in a very open position here. Uh, her legs tucked under her in a kind of playful gesture, and he's fiddling with his tie. They're doing well. Um, back to Nordberg. Nordberg was the king of this. Um, he was really, really good at, 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 at finding ways of expressing these poses in very, very clear, cartoony tones, clear, cartoony ways. And, and if you're in any doubt about this, about how, how, in a way, how easy it is to, um, or not, not easy, I shouldn't say easy, but how simplified these things can be, um, or, or, or how far we can caricature things, we'll go back to the, um, the flower sack. And this was an exercise that they pioneered at Disney when they were training the animators, which was to have the animators take a sack of flour and try and give it expressions. Now, a sack of flour's got no arms and no legs uh, and no face, no mouth, no eyes. So how can you possibly do expressions with a sack of flour? But the, the, actually, you can. You can get an amazing um, uh, amount out of a sack of flour. These are taken from the Illusion of Life, the Disney book, um, and you can see how much, uh, how expressive um, the, 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 the animators managed to make these sacks of flour. And it's, it's astonishing how much expression they could get out of these, these, little, um, uh, these little sacks. And that's really the trick with this stuff, is how much expression can you get out of the body? Um, and how, uh, uh, how interesting can you make simple forms? And there's a dejected one at the end. So, here's a sort of checklist for doing a, a, a great pose in Maya. Nine ways to get a great pose. So, obviously, start with a sketch. Thumbnails are always a great way to um, uh, uh, start off with anything. If you're having trouble drawing something, act it out. Take a picture of yourself in the pose. And then, uh, if you like, do a sketch on top of that. There's no shame in, 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 in acting stuff out yourself. Number three, make sure that your pose has a really good silhouette. Silhouettes are super important. 
Um, and uh, these are from these are taken from Eric Goldberg's excellent book, um, uh, uh, Character Animation Crash Course, which I highly recommend. Eric is one of the most talented animators working today, and he's very very good on things like silhouette and making things read clearly. The idea, the idea of a silhouette is to take your line drawing, uh, fill it in, or at least or squint at it, and ask yourself. Is the pose clear? Would it read clearly in silhouette if there was no surface detail? And I think the answer is yes with Eric's poses. Number four, set up your camera. Make sure you always know what the audience is going to see. Super important to set up your camera. Super important to make sure that you decide what the audience is going to look at. Um, five, asymmetry, not symmetry. This is an important thing. If we take Mickey on the left, this is again taken from The Illusion of Life. Uh, Mickey is in a rather stiff pose here, rather symmetrical, rather flat looking. But as soon as we throw him off the main axis, give a bit of a line of action to his body, we make it more dynamic, it's already more interesting to look at. Same is true with facial expressions, you know, one, uh, one, one eye up or one brow up, the other brow down, um, one eye slightly more open than the other will make facial expressions look more interesting. Also, ask yourself, where is the weight in the pose? You know, do, does the character feel heavy? She's carrying this big bag of bottles. We know this because she's having to lean her body over to left, over to the left, in order to compensate, uh, 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 and the um, gravity line falls down the middle. He's not. He's hardly leaning at all. We know that he's carrying a very small weight. Number seven. Make it interesting. Give it appeal. Is it nice to look at? Appeal is a is a quality in a in a drawing or a pose that's very hard to define. Uh, Milt Carl, who was a master draftsman, he certainly had it. Um, it's certainly um, uh, uh, tough to live up to Milt's incredibly high standards, but, but we can try and make our drawings nice to look at. Number eight, adjusting. You can always try adjusting the focal length of your camera. Um, the more depth of field you get, uh, the more dynamic your shots will, will appear. And there's a separate lecture on camera and depth of field, so do go ahead and have a look at that. So if you want to do some exercises for this, for body language, uh, go ahead and um, uh, take the uh, flower sack um, from, um, uh, from Creative Crash and go ahead and just try and make some poses with it. Happy poses, sad poses, angry poses, laughing poses, crying and fearful, or whatever comes to mind. Um, and uh, you can do it on uh, stepped curves, uh, posing out the sack every 24 frames uh, and... Uh, you probably will want to animate the camera too because you'll probably want to change the camera with uh, with each pose. But that's a nice expression there in order to get um, some good um, body expressions. Uh, and the uh, the second exercise to suggest is a man talking on the phone uh, and do uh, six poses suggesting a change in his mood. So six poses to in effect tell the story of the phone conversation that the man is having on the phone. So imagine the conversation Imagine how his body language might change during the course of that phone conversation. So good luck and I uh, 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 hope you uh, get something out of this lecture. Um, and just remember that the way you pose characters, body language is incredibly important in, in making good animation and making sure that our stuff has expression and character and personality.